In the previous video, we saw how to use inner joins, left joins, right joins, and full joins. There's one other type of join to talk about, but um, it comes up really rarely, and uh, it's not very efficient. So um, that's called a cross join. And um, in order to demonstrate one of the relatively few uses of a cross join, um, I've created a separate database with a separate table. Um, it's really, really small, minimal example. So I'm going to use the meals database. Execute that. I'm just go ahead and put a go in there too. And then let's look at the meals database. So here's meals and there's an orders table. There's three columns and that's it. So let's start by select star from orders to see what's there. And all we have is a table that shows main dish, side dish, number of orders. And if I run the select statement, I get back the number of orders for each combination of main dish and side dish. But you'll notice that it's not actually exhaustive here. So for example, um, nobody ordered beef curry with noodle. And so number of orders is zero, but that doesn't show up in this table anywhere. And uh, usually that's not a problem, but sometimes I actually want the full list. So for example, back up here, when I was looking at the um, names example, there are going to be some years that um, have neither recorded data for male or recorded data for female for a particular name. Um, so for example, um, if you use the name Justin um, with a Y, you're going to find that some values are missing. So let's go ahead and try Justin here and execute this query. Actually, I'm going to have to use IMDB or use names rather to make that work. So I'm going to use names and then I'm going to execute this query with Justin. And you'll see I'm missing some years. So even though I have all of the data for females and all of the data for males, there are still some years where the name Justin was not used at all. And uh, um, I may actually want to fill in all those rows as well to show that in 1915, for example, the name Justin had um, less than five male names and less than five female names. Um, for this particular table, there's easier ways to do it, and a cross join on this much data would be just really horrible, as we'll see in a second. But for the meals table, it's actually pretty straightforward. So what does a cross join do? A cross join is just like a join with no matching condition. And what it's going to do is it's going to take all the rows on the left, and for each row on the left, it's going to join it with all of the rows on the right. So let's take a look at what that's going to look like. I'm going to select star from orders as, and I'll call that uh, 01 to start. And then I'm going to cross join on orders as 02. And of course, um, you can join any two tables. It doesn't have to be the same table twice, but I'm doing that for simplicity. So. What this is going to do, and I don't specify an on condition here at all. And if I execute this, so for the first row in the 01 table, I got the first row of the 02 table. And then for the second row of 01, I got the first row of 02, third row of 01, first row of 02, fourth row, first row, and so on. So for each row in 01, I got a copy of the first row in 02. And then starts from the top again, and for each row in 01, I get the second row from 02. For each row in 03, I get the all the rows from 02. 
row 4, all the rows in O2, row 5, all the rows in O2, and so on. So even though the original table is really small, let's go ahead and just execute this much of it. So even though the original table only had 11 rows in it, when I take the cross join, I end up with 121 tables in the result. So 11 times 11 is 121. And if I had a million rows in the, in the table, and a million rows in the other table, then I would end up with a million million, which is just uh, not a practical amount of data to be working with. Um, so that's why a cross join is uh, going to be fairly um, inefficient because it has to slog through a lot of data and it's going to produce a lot of results. Um, but in this case, what I actually want, if I want the complete set of main dishes crossed with side dishes, this is a way of generating that. So, if, for example, if I select distinct 01.mainDish and 02.sideDish and execute that, Here's all the combinations of main dishes with side dishes. So I have four different side dishes, noodle, rice, soup, and vegetable. So I get that with beef curry, noodle, rice, soup, and vegetable with chicken curry, noodle, rice, soup, and vegetable for shrimp curry, and noodle, rice, soup, and vegetable for shrimp tempura. So all the possible combinations. And then if I want to add the number of times that particular dish was ordered, I can do a left join of that with O1 with orders again. And we'll use that O3 on and then O1.main dish equal O3.main dish and O1.side dish equal O2.side dish. I'm sorry, I got that wrong. That should be o2.side dish is o3.side dish. There. So it's generating all the possibilities and then it's doing a left join for all the possibilities with the orders again. And what I get, and actually let's select that column, o3.number of orders. So if I execute that, when there is a number of orders for a particular combination, that's going to show up in the table. When there's not, I still get the row, but I get null and number of orders. So the last step to clean this up a bit is I can use is null here to put in a zero if there were no orders as number of orders. So here's the final query. And once again, I have 16 rows coming back because there are four different types of main dishes and four different types of side dishes.